Hey, it's Kev from Blender Binge. In this video, we're going to be going over the basics of the principled shader node and cycles. It's really, really cool. And uh, once I show you how this works, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> I think you're going to like it. Ready? Let's go. Now, the first thing I want to show you is I set up a very basic scene. Okay, I have a plane on the ground. I have the camera and I have three area lights that are highlighting Suzanne. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go over to my camera. I'm going to hit zero and I'm going to lock camera to view. Okay, so now with that lock camera to view selected, I can kind of control where my camera is. And I'm, it's like I'm holding my camera. Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to show you that in the world, okay, little world thing, this icon, usually it starts off gray. I turned it to black. So we're just getting the lights that are going to be hitting Suzanne. And now I'm free and clear to assign her the principled shader. So if I select her and I go over to this little material node here, and I say new and then it gives me a default diffuse BSDF shader okay so I'm just gonna click on that and I'm going to go down to principled BSDF and what that gives me is this node so I zoom in here and I will show you let me let me pull this up a little bit so I can show you more here okay Here's our material output. Okay, this is what gets sent to the renderer. This is what gets sent to cycles. So every shader that we create, we hook up to either surface, volume, or displacement for material output. All right, so this one shader here can do a whole lot. So if I go ahead and go over here and say rendered, all right, and I let cycles draw this out for me, you see that it's just very basic. It's a very basic kind of white base shader. Now what we can start doing with this is you start noticing there's multi-scatter, GGX, and GGX. I'll leave it at multi-scatter for now. That's fine. And I can play with the base color. So as you've seen in other tutorials that I've made, you can change this guy to anything. Any color you want. All right, And you can play around with that. That's that's very self-explanatory. Now, I'm not going to worry about subsurface yet. I'll show you that a little bit later in this video. But what I will show you right now is if I go ahead and turn down specular, okay, you can just left click and drag in here. You see that it gets a very matte finish. Okay, like it's made out of some very very like paper. All right? When you turn up specular, all right, if I go all the way up, you kind of start getting this very plasticky look. And if I turn that down, I get paper again. See that? Metallic works very similarly, where if I pull up metallic, you now see it kind of darkens it. It gives that what's called a Fresnel effect, okay, which is it's more reflective based on the glancing angle. But you see it starts turning more metallic. Okay, and if I change this from blue, say, back to white, and I just make all that one, you could see that it starts getting pretty metallic. If I turn this to black, you don't see much because it's just black. But Okay, so if I go here in kind of the gray area, you can see this just based on my lighting setup that it starts looking more metallic. Okay, take that down. We get paper again. Now, if I have this specular up to make it kind of plasticky and I start playing with this roughness angle now you could see that it starts kind of breaking up the the look okay so it's taking the light that's hitting it and it's giving these like little micro facets on the surface that bounce the light around and it makes those highlights less sharp so just to show you this better what I'll do is I'll go back to solid okay make sure this is selected and I will go over here and uh, let me go to tools and I'll go to smooth. 
All right. And I'll smooth her out and then I'll go back to rendered view. And you can see this better now, right? Less faceted. So I took the roughness down and you see it's very kind of just very, very shiny, shiny plastic. Whereas if I pull this roughness up, okay, it starts getting more kind of rubbery. Okay. More rubber. And you can see any color, you know, you got to get this rubbery look. Okay. So that's without metallic on. Now, I usually don't use specular and metallic at the same time. You can and kind of dial in different looks, but usually it's kind of best to just kind of let it be one or the other. So here I get a very metallic look, okay? If I go it's kind of white here, okay, very, very chrome out, chromed look, okay, where it's just reflecting the lights in the scene. So over here we have anisotropic, which is kind of, uh, it stretches out your specular hit okay so what that does is it gives you this kind of brushed metal look and it's not really working right now because I have to take up the roughness a little bit all right but this starts giving you a very kind of brushed metal look okay where it's not as shiny it's not chrome like it's more the surface is disturbed and it gives you this cool you know brushed metal and if you have anisotropic, it really stretches it out. So you turn that to one, and it really stretches out this this uh, highlight. And then you can see here that you really start getting this uh, this kind of look. Right, that's anisotropic. Right, so I'll turn that back. I'll I'll back down roughness. Right. Take down metallic. Kind of get it back to this kind of paper look. Okay, and I'll give it no sheen tint or anything. Now, you also notice down here there's something called clear coat. If I turn on clear coat, and let me turn this down a little bit color wise so you can see this better, okay? So it's not so reflective. Clear coat adds an other layer of shine. Think of it as a as a, a, a layer of varnish or clear coat on your car or on a guitar. Okay, so if I turn on specular here, or let's say I turn on metallic, all right? and I have clear coat on as well all right I have and let me let me take this out so you can see it more I have clear coat roughness also so you could see here when I start making clear coat really rough you could see that it starts to break it up so say I wanted to do a, a type of a car shader or something okay and and this is not gonna have those little metallic flecks in it but I'll just do a, a, a car something like a car shader all right so I'll give it kind of a candy apple red color. All right, or, there we go. And um, yep. I will go and I'll say, make this undercoat metallic. All right, so you get this kind of metallic look underneath. And then I'll give a clear coat on top. All right that will also start bringing in a plasticky or a kind of varnish looking highlight. So let me show you here. All right. And if I do clear coat roughness, you see how, see how I get, okay, in clear coat right here, I get really sharp highlights. Okay. With, with clear coat off, you see, I'm just getting the metal reflection. You'll start seeing the white come in when I bring in this clear coat. All right. And then if I do clear coat roughness, it will break that up and it'll spread those spread that clear coat out. So it appears there's like a another layer here. And you can see as I turn it, you see there's more like another almost like another layer on top of this. Okay, see that? And it works the same way with specular, except it maps it kind of the same places. But you can see this is really plasticky now. All right, so I have pla I have specular on and I have clear coat. Turn off clear coat, I'm just getting one one highlight. Turn on clear coat, I'm getting kind of another layer 
underneath. Does that make sense? Until so it gets very plasticky, kind of very shiny, you know, coated plastic. And same thing with metallic. Alright, if I go full on metallic and I push on clear coat, I'm getting both. Well, let me see if I can uh, clear coat roughness, see how it starts breaking out that, that clear coat, okay? It starts making it more rough, it, it, it spreads out that highlight. Without it, you can see just black. With it, you can see a lot more. Now, if your lighting is more dynamic and you have more reflections in the scene, you'd probably see this even better. But in keeping this video very simple, I just kind of want to show you what this does on a simple object. Okay. Now, if I turn that all back and I go back to my nice kind of paper look, and maybe I'll make I'll, uh, I'll make Suzanne flat again. All right, so it breaks out this flatness. You also down here have transmission. Now, transmission is where you make her transparent. All right, so you see you're starting to get this kind of gem look to her, and that's why I turned on flat, so you can really see this kind of gemmed out look. And if I turn on specular here, okay, you really start seeing this this look. Okay, I could turn off specular. It doesn't really, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, but transmission will make her transparent. And if I turn and make her white, you can see that she's pretty much glassy. I'll let that render and you can see. Let me pause it and let it clean up and then I'll show you. Okay, so here you can see she's very glassy. And that's being controlled by your transmission. Take transmission down. She's opaque again. So this principled shader does quite a bit. Now here's the last one. The last thing I want to show you here is this is this uh, subsurface scattering. Before I, I'll also show you transmission index of refraction. But if you leave index of refraction here at 1.45, that's pretty good for a lot of things. There are charts out there that let you simulate the index of refraction, which is light goes in and it refracts. Okay, it bends. So that gives you that you know, it gives you that look that. Um, kind of transparent glass, gloss, water, uh, anything transparent will, will bend light as it goes in. And your index of refraction will give you different looks. So why don't I show you that right now. I'll turn on transmission and then I'll play with the index of refraction. Okay, index of refraction at one, you can see you barely see anything. The reason you barely see anything here is because light's going in and it's not refracting, it's not bouncing around. So it's almost like it's just going straight through it and you don't really see anything. Okay? When you start turning up your index of refraction, this is when you start seeing the results because you're bending the light that's coming in here. Okay? Does that make sense? So 1.45 pretty good for most most glassy things. And and like I said, there are there are charts out there on the net that detail the index of refraction for all kinds of material. So if you want to get really truly physically accurate with your materials, you would go and you would find the index of refraction for, I don't know, alcohol, okay? And then you can just type that in here and it'll look like alcohol, okay? If you fill the glass with this stuff and it would look like alcohol or water or gems, uh, different gemstones have different uh, index of refraction. So you can really dial that in and get something very, very close to real life. All right, so now I'm going to knock down transmission. I'm going to go back here. And the last thing I'm going to show you that I started to before, before I decided to show you index of refraction is this subsurface scattering color. Subsurface is like wax. Okay, to do that, I'm going to change this and change her to smooth. And I'm going to go ahead and show you um, this subsurface. So if I turn on subsurface, with this color, the subsurface color, you're going to see that you'll start seeing this color showing up around the edges here. Okay, so if I turn this up, you'll start seeing kind of a skin or a wax kind of look. 
the light's coming in, it's bouncing around, and it's picking up this color. If I change this color, you see it changes the color that is bouncing around and returning out of the surface. So, subsurface scatter allows you to go in and create skin, wax, a whole bunch of different things. And this subsurface amount controls how much of it there is. So, I generally never do this because, I don't know, unless I'm going for something very, very specific, I'm never going to put it up to one. But I often find that, you know, something around, something between, say, you know, 0.1 and 0.5 usually does a pretty good trick to fake most things. And if I changed her color, say, to a more yellow, an orange, you can kind of see this look is blending. All right, so this radius here controls how deep the subsurface goes. So right now we're at 1. If I went 0.1 or 0.01, all right, you can see it starts going more toward just toward the surface. All right, so you can start really kind of dialing in how much subsurface you want. It takes a little while to play with it and get it right, so you kind of got to keep dialing it in. And it works with specular, so if I turned on specular, okay, here's where I, I can start getting really waxy look. Okay, so my base color, if I took my base color down, all right, and just say uh, base color, just this gray, and, or, you know, let's do something cool. Let's do, uh, let's, let's keep it, we'll keep it red, and then this will make pink. Okay, so now we can start look, making it really kind of waxy. And wax, unless it's really shiny, doesn't usually have this. So you just take up this roughness. And you start getting something that looks pretty waxy. Pretty like a candle. Now keep in mind, subsurface scattering takes a lot longer to render. But you can emulate a lot of different looks in this one shader. Now you can give it a clear coat too, if you want, which will take your wax and it's like you shined the wax. <laughs> Alright, so you can start seeing it, it. It allows you to do some really, really cool stuff, and it looks normal, it looks natural. Okay, so go in and play with this, and you'll start getting a feel for how this works. The principal shader as a whole is really, really good for giving you quick and dirty looks and stimulating a lot of different types of materials. So hopefully that helped. I know there was a very, very basic overview. Uh, maybe for some of you it went really fast, so I would you know recommend watching this video again. For others, it was probably very, very basic. And you know, you for those of you who have actually read the Disney paper on the different uh, you know on the principal shader implementation and uh, seen it in other programs yeah that's pretty basic but you can do a lot more with this shader and the really nice thing is it wraps it all up in one area okay one little one little thing that you can do a whole lot with so hopefully that helps again if you got something out of this video like subscribe tell people whatever and uh, i'll just keep making more thanks bye